Welcome. This educational video has been developed to help explain the borough's proposed rental license and inspection law. I'm your borough manager, Brad Flynn. Before I provide an overview of what's to come, first, let's discuss why we have this law. So what's the purpose of this law? The Borough of Bath has certain police powers designated by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. As such, the Borough can create a law such as the Rental Licensing Law, which will assist the Borough in protecting and promoting the public's health, safety, and welfare of its citizens. The law establishes rights and obligations of owners, managers, and occupants relating to rental properties and seeks that owners, managers, and occupants will properly maintain residential rental properties within the Borough of Bath. The law ensures owners, managers, occupants have responsibilities to comply with the codes, avoid nuisances for neighboring occupants or guests of occupants or patrons of permitted establishments. And finally, the law provides a system to apply for a rental license and license renewal, rental license inspections, issue rental licenses, renewals, establishes penalties for violating the law. So who's exempt from this law? Owner-occupied dwelling units, except for any part of that owner-occupied dwelling unit subject to a rental agreement. State licensed hospitals, nursing homes, personal care homes, and group homes. And finally, hotel units as regulated by the Northampton County Hotel Room Rental Tax. Here's what this video will cover. Number one applying for a rental unit license, and scheduling for the rental unit inspection. Number two, discussing the annual and the service fees associated with the program. Number three, what's the rental inspection gonna be like under the minimum standards inspection? And we wanna thank Emmanuel Mirabito and Man Family Partnerships for allowing the borough to inspect 100 West Main Street, Suite 2. Number four, what happens should you fail the MSI? Number five, what is disruptive conduct? Number six, what's the appeals process should you disagree with a zoning or code official's decision? Number seven, what are some of the violations and penalties for non-compliance? And number eight, a conclusion. So let's get started. I'm Tanya, the Office Secretary for the Borough of Bath. I'll be processing your rental license application. The application will identify whether a new, existing, or renewal rental license is required based on your set of circumstances. Once I receive your paperwork, we will issue a temporary rental license if you are waiting for the initial rental unit inspection. If you are applying for a rental license renewal, you must submit an application and ensure all necessary documents accompany the renewal request. Information must be accurate and up to date. Licenses are non-transferable. Rental units that are sold or transferred to a new owner must file a transfer of ownership subject to the requirements of the rental law and minimum standards inspections. This must occur within 30 days, either before or after the transfer of ownership. When you file your application, please be sure to have the necessary licensing fee included, along with the following information. For any property owner of a rental unit that lives more than a 20 mile radius from the rental unit, a power of attorney listing a property manager will be required with your application. The application should also include the tenant addendum. This is a four-page document required to be filled with a rental license and signed by occupants legally liable under a rental agreement. All forms will be available on the borough website. All initial inspections will be scheduled as follows. Applications received in January 2022, inspections scheduled in the second quarter. Applications received in February 2022, inspections scheduled in the third quarter. Applications received in March 2022, inspections scheduled in fourth quarter. 
key distinctions to remember, licenses are required yearly and are only valid one year from the date of issuance. Rental unit inspections occur initially and triannually every three years. Unless a complaint is received and in the code official's discretion, an additional inspection is needed. Owners and managers are not charged for the additional inspections. We're here to help. Just know that the front office is the initial point of contact and processing of your paperwork. Technical questions about the law or inspection process is best kept for the code officials. Prior to your inspections or at any other time, you can schedule an appointment with the zoning code, and code office for a rental license consultation. Fees apply. Thank you. <laughs> Applications will be checked for the following items that will suspend further review. Water Authority notices of termination, unpaid bills and municipal claims. Are there any building code violations that condemns the property? The zoning officer will check if the rental unit as existing or new meets the zoning law. If existing and does not meet zoning review, is there a record of nonconformity? Or can the unit obtain a certificate of nonconformity? Certificates of nonconformity is a separate zoning process the zoning officer can help you with if your property qualifies. Once your application has been completely reviewed, the zoning officer will schedule an inspection time for your minimum standards inspection, normally 10 days prior to the inspection occurring. fee schedule for the Rental Inspection and Registry Program are as follows. The license fee is $100 per unit per year, which includes up to two minimum standards inspections. There is a $30 fee for no-shows if 24-hour notice is not given prior to the cancellation of a previously scheduled inspection. Certain circumstances allow for a landlord to appeal the process. Depending upon the nature of the appeal request, fees begin at $300. If rental licenses are suspended for any reason, there is a $150 reinstatement fee. If you need a consultation with the code official, it is $30 for a 45 minute appointment and $13.75 for 15 minutes in excess of that appointment. Finally, complaints may be made on a rental unit by anyone at any time. Should the complainant wish the nature of the complaint be inspected, there is an $85 deposit required. The deposit is returned to the complainant pending the findings of the inspection. We're here at 100 West Main Street. We're gonna do a mock inspection of a rental unit in Bath under the borough's proposed rental license and inspection law. So we're here with Sean Lighty with Barry Izette, the borough's code uh, vendor, and we're gonna be checking this unit today for compliance with the uh, current Bath law. Okay, here we are in the back of the building. A couple things to note. The, uh, the downspout at the top corner there is, is disconnected from the gutter, so that'll have to be repaired and the rest of the downspout here cuts off uh, right around the first floor. That'll have to come all the way down to the ground and be directed away from the building. Uh, other than that, everything looks good out back here. One of the items we're checking here on a res residential rental unit is the property identification. So premise identification, in this case, it has the four inch numbers, four inch numbers on the, uh, on the building and that's good to go. Okay, here we are standing by the, uh, the outdoor AC unit. Um, now just by looking at it, you can't tell if it works or not. Uh, we mainly just check for any hazardous conditions, make sure there's no wires or anything else exposed, any kind of hazards. Um, everything seems to be in order, everything looks good, and um, this would pass. Okay, here we are in the exterior of the building, uh, looking at the front, a couple items we noticed. If you look at the top of the gutter up there, there's some weeds or growth growing out of the gutter. Uh, that can clog up the gutter and create water backing up. Um, so that'll have to be cleared out. Another item up here is the loose wire hanging out there. That'll have to be removed. 
And we noticed some rotting wood there uh, at the corner of the building. That'll have to either be repaired or capped. And other than that, that, everything looks good out front here. We're inside now, 100 West Main Street. This is the foyer area. We have our inspector here, Sean, and we're gonna be checking over, again, the stairwell coming into the apartment and just things of note. We're looking for the, the handrails itself, as you'll see. Two handrails. And then we noted here there was an electrical box that has got a proper plate and we want to make sure the junction boxes have that um, in place. Proper smoke detector in the correct location. Okay, here we are in one of the bedrooms. I will quickly check a window to make sure that it opens. And it does open. Believe it or not, people do nail the windows shut, which is a big, big problem. Um, just checking the receptacles. There's at least two in here. One here and one over there. One behind you. Oh, and one there. And one over here. And one over there. So we got, we got, we got it covered. And one back here. <laughs> In mean, one of the bedrooms here, we have a closet, as you'll see, and it's got a, a, light, a light fixture within the closet. And we're checking to make sure that, in this case, the light is recessed or that it has a proper light cover. And it's good to go. Okay, here we are in the uh, second bedroom. Again, I'm going to just look for the number of receptacles in here. I see one over there, one there, one back there, and another one here. So there's at least two in here, which is perfect. I'll, again, check the window. Perfectly, and there's a smoke detector, so everything in here looks good. Checking to ensure that the rental unit it does have a heating and cooling system, it does have a heat pump, so here's a thermostat for that. And our exterior inspection will be checking the outside of the unit and the electrical connections. Here we are in the living room. Um, clearly, the window opens because there's an air conditioner in there. There are also at least two receptacles in here. I see at least three or four, so that looks good. For interior, exterior, uh, door components of a rental unit, we're just checking to ensure the door's in place, it's not hanging off the hinges, it's not hanging off the frame. Door handles work, the uh, catch uh, latch works. That's all we're checking for with the doors. Here we are in the kitchen. There's a number of things to look for in the kitchen. First, we check all the receptacles, make sure they're uh, GFI protected. Those two look good. Okay. All four are GFI protected, all four work correctly. And we'll check the sink. Sure. Plumbing appears to water run sufficiently. Check underneath the trap to make sure there's no visible leaks. Everything looks good. Here's a window. I just checked to make sure the window opens properly. In which case it does. Now there is a smoke detector here in the kitchen. However, it does not work. So that would be something we would note on our report. Here we have the laundry area. There's no washer and dryer. However, you can tell by the hookup here, it's the laundry area. There is a receptacle here for the machine. However, it is not a GFI protected receptacle and that would fail uh, the inspection. That needs to be a GFI receptacle in the laundry area. Okay, here we are in the bathroom. Uh, again, the bathroom, much like the kitchen, there's a number of things we look for. Uh, just check the faucet. Make sure the water runs properly. Check the plumbing underneath. Pipes look good. No sign of leaking. Uh, the toilet back here. Let's give it a quick flush. Uh, next thing we're going to check in the bathroom is the shower. Uh, we just look around the, the, the tub and the shower surround quick. Make sure it's uh, caulked. No no uh, leaks or anywhere area any areas where water can penetrate. So check the water quick. Okay, water runs.
runs fine, it's draining fine, everything in here looks good. Okay, the last thing we look for in the bathroom is make sure that any receptacles are GFI protected. So here in the bathroom we're checking, this is where the electrical panel is going to be for the rental unit. Each rental unit is required to have at least a 60 or a 100 amp service. This is a 100 amp service and everything is labeled and it's easily accessible and that's what we're looking for. Okay, here we are at the, uh, the water heater. Uh, a couple things we're looking for here, just making sure the, the lines uh, look correct. Everything looks good up here. And then a big important item is the, uh, the overflow or the pressure relief pipe here. You want to make sure that's in place and it needs to either be copper or PVC. And it needs to be roughly six inches from the bottom of the pipe to the ground, which that one looks to be uh, perfectly correct. And other than that, um, there's you know good area around it um, and everything looks good. Once the physical inspection is complete, the inspector will finish the minimum standards inspection report. The report lists the date and time the inspection occurred, the address, the unit number, the inspector's name, as well as the party present for the inspection. Section A will be completed typically in the office prior to the physical inspection having occurred. There are four questions in the initial Section A that must be answered prior to the physical inspection. On 100 West Main Street, we noted on the exterior inspection the following items. The roof system. Both on the rear and the front sides of the structure, there was issues with the guttering system. On the front side, we had weeds growing from the gutters, which could cause a blockage, and it could cause the guttering system not to work properly and shed water away from the structure. On the rear of the property, the guttering system was not completely attached downspouts were missing, and that needs to be corrected. Water should flow away from the foundation of the structure at all times. Some other items on the exterior inspection on the front side of the building, the side facing West Main Street, we found a hole in the soffit and it appeared that a bird's nest had formed within the hole of the soffit. That needs to be corrected. It was also noted by the inspector there was an electrical wire that appeared to be coiled extending from the wall with tape on the end. That wire needs to ensure it's properly connected or placed in a junction box or removed in order to be made safe. The interior of the rental unit inspection, the inspector noted the following items. Smoke detectors in multiple locations were not functioning properly, and it was actually discovered by the inspector. Batteries did not exist in some of the units that were tested. This needs to be corrected. Also within the inside of the rental unit inspection, a GFCI was missing in the laundry room and that receptacle needs to have a GFI protection. Inspector will then create a notice of violation based off this report. It'll be sent to the owner for corrections with an appropriate timeline to have those corrections made and then a secondary or follow-up inspection will be scheduled with the owner and the inspector to complete the rental unit inspection. Should the code official determine that a rental unit has failed the MSI, the property owner will have 20 days from the date of service and notice of violation to cure all the violations enumerated within the report. There are exceptions to this rule. If a rental unit is found to be unfit for human habitation, it shall be vacated until the code violations have been corrected. If there are serious violations that do not create a condition for which it cannot be habitated, those corrections can be made within 24 hours or another term, time period as determined by the code enforcement officer. And finally, if there are any violations requiring more than 20 days to cure, the 
The code enforcement officer can grant those decisions in his or her sole discretion and additional time to effect a cure shall be notated in writing for the property owner. Disruptive conduct is any conduct that violates the borough's nuisance or fireworks laws. Disruptive conduct also includes anyone subject to a criminal citation for disorderly conduct. Anyone who violates the Landlord-Tenant Act of 1951 related to drug offenses. Disruptive conduct is also anyone subject to a PA crimes or liquor code violation. Disruptive conduct is a three-strike system. However, in order for reported disruptive conduct to constitute disruptive conduct, a written disruptive conduct report must be issued by the code enforcement officer and such notice shall be served upon the occupant legally liable under a rental agreement and the owner or manager, if any, pursuant to the rental inspection law. If an occupant receives three disruptive conduct reports within a 12-month period, the borough will issue an eviction order to the property owner or the designated manager. The property owner or designated manager then has 20 days to file an eviction proceeding. Let's discuss the appeals process, as there are four different areas to appeal. First, any type of zoning decision that needs to be appealed, that can go to the local Borough of Bath Zoning Hearing Board. Number two, any type of disruptive conduct or for most code decisions within the MSI report, those decisions can be appealed to the Bath Rental License and Inspection Board of Appeals. Number three, should your property have a condemnation order or if the code official found a structural problem with the foundation leading to a condemnation order, or if your rental license does not meet occupancy load limitations, those decisions can be appealed to the Nazareth Area Council of Government Property Maintenance Board of Appeals. Fourth and finally, for any issues relative to the Uniform Construction Code, those decisions would need to be appealed to the Nazareth Area Council of Government Uniform Construction Code Board of Appeals. Let's discuss some of the violations and penalties associated with the rental law. If the law becomes adopted by council in 2021, it goes effective January 1st, 2022. There's a 90 day period here for property owners with rental units to get registered, apply for a license. That's from January 1 through the end of March, 2022. Any rental unit operating thereafter without a license or having applied for a license would be subject to a fine. But first, you'll get a 30 days written notice that you're in violation of the law. If you fail to comply within 30 days, the fine carries $500 to $1,000 and this will be assessed every five days in continued non-compliance. If there's an operating of a rental unit or renewal while revoked, this can carry a fine of between $500 and $1,000 each five days in non-compliance. If an occupant legally liable under, occupies the rental under a rental agreement without a license, the occupant could be fined $500 to $1,000 for each five days of non-compliance. If any owner, manager, occupant violates any other provision of the rental licensing law, you can be fined $250 to $1,000 each five days in non-compliance with the local ordinance. Finally, rental licenses are subject to suspensions and revocations. We've reached the conclusion of this educational video, and we've covered a lot of ground. We've discussed how to apply for the rental unit license, the annual fees, the inspection process, what happens if an owner fails an MSI inspection, what is disruptive conduct, and we've discussed some of the fines and penalties associated with the law. And finally, we've discussed how to make certain appeals to a code official's decision. We hope this information is useful and understand that this process is continual. And if adjustments need to be made to the law, Borough Council can certainly do that. And we will constantly evaluate the program in its continued use. Remember, the Borough team is here to help property owners, managers, and occupants succeed. We are available to you. 
just give us a call, ask questions, schedule a consult, email us, and always check the Borough Facebook and website for further updates. We thank you for watching. Be well, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.